the West Caldwell High School Navy Junior ROTC members for being here, trying to social distance, to wear the masks, be safe, makes it very difficult to do a color guard. But they're standing by the colors of our nation and our state. And I'd also like to thank the band director who is here to later on during the ceremony to play taps for us. Because this gathering is for us to remember others. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, would you please stand for the national anthem. If you're in the cover, you know what to do.
And with that, we'll take a moment of silence to remember those POWs and MIAs. Those are open and can be purchased through City Hall. 
here in Lenore. So if you have a friend or a loved one, family member that you would like to have a memoir on the Veterans Plaza, please do so. We would love to have those names on there. In closing, let me say this. Thank you for having me here today. Thank you for what all of you do. Thank you for the American Legion and what it stands for. I offer my sincere gratitude to all of our veterans who serve so faithfully around the world. May God bless our veterans and their families. And when it's time, please bring them all home safe and sound when their time of service is finished. I ask you this weekend and through tomorrow being Memorial Day and the rest of the week, and actually maybe for the month of June, since there's so many things, please fly your flag. Please put your flag out if you have one at your home and let everyone know how you feel about our wonderful country. Right now, we probably need it more than any other time than we've had in a long, long time. We need that feeling where we can know that we, at some point, we'll be able to come back together and honor our great country. And right now, that's, that's difficult, as we know. I ask you please to remain safe to follow guidelines the best you can as we begin to open up our communities. A lot of things opening Friday and will be opening all next week. But still, we've got to be safe if we're going to, to beat this, this COVID-19 pandemic. So please be safe. I would like to say congratulations to our commander, Mr. Bill Oxford, and his service to the American Legion for so far a part of a year. And I know this year's beginning to be a little struggle, but I think he's going to be on again for next year. So I offer him my congratulations and thank him for serving and honoring our community with being a commander for all over the nation in America. Thank you, Bill. I really appreciate that. I will close by saying may God bless the United States of America and God bless this great state and country. Thank you very much. It's my distinct uh, pleasure and honor now to uh, introduce our uh, guest speaker, James W. Uh, Oxford, we all know him as uh, Bill, National Commander of the American Legion. A native of Lenore, North Carolina, Bill is a paid up for life member and past commander of Post 29 here in Lenore. He serves as Department Commander of the State of uh, North Carolina. From 2010 to uh, 2011, he's a veteran of the U.S. Marine Corps who served in Vietnam during his initial enlistment. After being discharged as a sergeant in 1970, Bill B. Uh, joined the uh, North Carolina National Guard. He subsequently attended officer's candidate school and transferred to the uh, U.S. Army Reserve, where he ultimately retired as a colonel with more than uh, 34 years of military service. Commander Oxford has served at uh, every level of the American Legion. This theme as national commander is the American Legion is a foundation for the future as the organization enters its second century of service. He earned a bachelor's degree in environmental studies and uh, multiple safety and environmental certificates. Bill has volunteered as a coach, umpire, referee, and administrator in several youth athletic programs, including service as the public address announcer for Post 29's American Legion baseball team. An active volunteer in several organizations to include the Masonic Lodge, York Scot Scottish Rite. Bill and his uh, wife, Frances, have been married since 1967. They have a son, Charles, married to uh, Thea Reed, and a daughter, Jackie, married to Mike Carr. They also have four grandsons. National Commander of the American Legion, Bill Oxford.
Jackie, stand up. Uh, Wayne talked about my my son and daughter. Uh, my daughter's going to be laying one of the wreaths today. So, Jackie, thank you for helping us out. But uh, we're we're here today and this weekend to talk about and celebrate Memorial Day. But think about this. It could be better said, lest we forget. Uh, if you're a veteran here today and you serve this country, thank you for your service. You're to be commended. The service and sacrifices you have made to this country can never be repaid. But if you're a veteran here today, it's not about you. It's about those people who have served this country and made the supreme sacrifice in service to their country. The American military has been part of our society for more than 240 years. And that service can never be understated or repaid. That service stretches from 1775 in the American Revolution to today. We have servicemen and women in more than 130 countries scattered around this world. Sadly, none of the men and women who have died in service to this country can be repaid or replaced. And there have been more than a million of them. But their, their sacrifices must be remembered and honored. Most were in their young, most were young in their prime, husbands, sons, wives, daughters, mothers, uncles. They all left a nation that will be forever in their debt. Picture, picture in your mind's eye, if you would, just a couple of things. The empty seat at the dinner table. Opening presents on Christmas for someone missing. The Thanksgiving Day football game in the yard with the star players. The dollar without a father to walk her down the aisle. All lost in service to you, me, and this country. Wayne talked about one of the people that he served with. I'd like to introduce you to a few people that I know knew. William Billy Lewis. I remember Billy. I was in the third grade. He was in the second grade at Whitman Elementary School. I still see Billy's brother, Eddie. I went to school with, with Eddie's wife, Carol. And Eddie's still around town. He's still involved with classic cars. You can see it down on the square. Most times they have classic cars. As long as you know, you know. The uh, Company, 1st Battalion, 46th Infantry, America, Division, Republic of Vietnam, killed May 12th, 1969. Benny Presswood from Hudson Granite Falls Sawmills, B Company, 1st Battalion, 1st Marines, Republic of Vietnam. Benny and I played football together. I was a 10th grader, he was a 9th grader. Benny was a red-headed, funny guy, fun to be around. Good run back. That was high back. He was a wing back. We just kind of ended up on the same teams a lot of times. But the thing I remember about Benny Presley, he was a good running back, but he carried the football funny. He carried the football up and down instead of forward and back, like the coaches taught us. Benny's last letter to his family Three days after Thanksgiving, November 68, was written on a sea ration box because paper was so scarce. He was previously wounded, died January 9, 1969. Jackson Ramsour, West Colorado High School. Jason had, uh, he had previously been deployed to Afghanistan and he had only been in Iraq a month when he died, killed by an IED. I, when I did the PA at West College, I called his name many times. He was a small guy, but he was a 
his blood called him Sergeant Brain. Killed in service to his country. 2008, another 29 year old from Caldwell County was killed when the vehicle he was driving struck a roadside bomb. A true Southern John. I didn't know Robbie Bowman personally, but I knew his family. And all his friends talked about his personal motto when they said, My life has a taste the shelter will never know. Robbie told a lot about himself when he told this story. His little sister asked him, Why do you have to go again? Why do you have to leave? He said, I go and do what I do. So you won't have to, Mother Francis. At its core, Memorial Day commemorates the universal, all encompassing word from the Bible when it says, No greater love than this does any man have than to lay down his life for his friends. I knew those four guys. Caldwell County, Illinois, and many others who made that sacrifice. But let me let me make one more introduction and picture picture this in your mind's eye. First platoon, Charlie Company, 26th Infantry, First Infantry Division, U.S. Army, on a motorized patrol. A 19-year-old Spec 4 is manning the machine gun on top. Of an armored Humvee. It wasn't unexpected because they expected contact control. Somebody threw a grenade at the Humvee. It landed in the turret, fell through the turret, through the opening all the way to the bottom of the Humvee. You, you can see the picture. High, high buildings on either side. What that specialist was trained to do what he did and why he did it is a different story. Rather than save himself, Specialist Ross McGinnis from Meadville, Pennsylvania, jumped down inside the vehicle <coughs> and smothered the grenade with his own body. He died instantly, but the four other soldiers survived their wounds. In June of 2008, in the Oval Office, his parents were presented the Medal of Honor on his behalf. An American hero by any standard. But does a medal or an award make the loss of their son any easy? I think not. All of our little homes call Memorial Day our most sacred holiday and courage that we not ponder with sad thoughts the passing of our heroes, but rather ponder their legacy. As we ponder the passing of heroes, Ross McGinnis meets every description, every standard. But these, these five people I've just talked about, those deaths can never be repaid. But, and I ask you to do this very carefully, Consider the four other soldiers in that armored Humvee who lived because Ross McGinnis died. Those other four soldiers, their wives, their children, their extended families, they owe their world to the young man who gave his life to protect theirs. I knew Billy Luce, Benny Preston, Jason Ranser, and Robin Bowman's family pretty well, and I could describe how their deaths made me feel. And I suppose, I suppose many of you, Wayne, could relate to the loss of friends. But cry as we might, we can analyze, dissect, discuss with you, but we will never come up with a way to express the feelings those other four soldiers have and will forever have for Ross McGinnis. We as Americans need to understand how thankful those four soldiers are and realize that we should 
feel the same way about every person who ever gave their life in service to this country. Consider that when we talk about Memorial Day and the people who have lost their lives to preserve and protect this nation. Are we that thankful? <clears throat> Those Americans who lost their lives in service to this country have not done so in vain, but for a bigger and more noble cause, not just for America, but for the world. Only a few people choose the dangerous but essential work of protecting this country. We always need to remember, honor, and recognize those people who choose to bear the sword in defense of this country. We need to be thankful for their service their sacrifice, but there's something else that we need to do. We have a responsibility to carry on. We cannot let those deaths be in vain. Take up that quarrel with our enemies. Never give up. Never abandon the American ideals of justice, freedom, democracy. We have a responsibility to carry on, preserve, and protect this nation. Hope everyone has a safe, happy Memorial Day. Be safe. Practice social distancing. Things are improving. And when we get through this, like the mayor said, we'll be better and strong, stronger because of it. But for Memorial Day 2020, we need to remember, honor, and be eternally grateful for those members of our society who have lost their life protecting us. God bless America. God bless the American service members who have lost their life protecting her and us. Thank you. I'd like to ask everyone to please uh, rise as the uh, Auxiliary Unit 29 presents the uh, wreaths commemorating our different services. Please also remain standing because right after that we'll go ahead and have uh, taps, or excuse me, a 21 gun salute to remember those who gave their all, and taps. Thank you. Auxiliary, place the wreaths.
will now be led in our uh, benediction by our uh, post chaplain, Paul Knight. Gentlemen, please uncover. If you would, bow with me once again. Our great and almighty Heavenly Father, we once again approach your throne of grace with humbleness and gratitude. Lord, as we depart from this place, remembering those who have fallen, honoring them, we once again ask for your watch care over their souls and comfort for the families who are left, sometimes in grief for many years. Lord, we can beseech you at this time a particular petition that you will be with the leaders of this great nation, that you will guide them and put within their hearts the willingness to look toward you and your statutes, to look for you for guidance for this great country of ours. Lord, we also would like to extend a prayer and ask for your watch care over those who have quit the battlefield, yet the horrors of war still ravage their bodies and ravage their minds. For those who still struggle day to day, Lord, we pray for your comfort. We pray for your guidance. And we pray, Lord, that you will give us, their brethren, doors of opportunity to help them to comfort them and to be with them. We ask for your watch, care, and guidance over our families and over our souls. In Jesus' name is our prayer. Amen. Again, I'd like to thank everyone for uh, coming out today to remember those that have uh, gone on before us that gave their all for our nation. <clears throat> and I'd especially like to thank the folks that were involved in placing the wreaths for uh, standing by our colors with the uh, NGRTC here from West Caldwell High School and our main director from West Caldwell High School who uh, so aptly paid taps for us. Again, enjoy your weekend. Thank you, and have a great day.